Good morning, everybody. In the previous video, we have seen that the French revolutionaries introduced many methods so that nationalism can be brought in France. They also felt that it is their duty to spread nationalism in all of Europe. Now, when the news of French revolution reached other parts of the world, the people in other parts of Europe also started forming Jacobin clubs. They also started discussing among themselves about the political future of their own country. Then they did some activities and some, they started some programs uh, which encouraged the French army to help them. So now when these countries like Holland, Switzerland, Belgium, Italy, when these countries uh, started some activities to bring a change in their own country, so the French armies also went to help them. The students, the middle educated middle class, they all were in favor of changing their own form of government. So now, when French armies reached these countries to help them to liberate from their monarchic system of government, during that time in France, political changes occurred. The French Revolution has already ended by that time, uh, and the National Assembly uh, have, uh, was also overthrown, and the new form of government came in France. So by that time, monarchic form of government was restored in France and Napoleon became the ruler in France. But though in France, monarchical system came back, that means Napoleon became the ruler, but it was not the same monarchical system as it was during the time of Louis XVI or during the time of Bourbon dynasty. The new monarchical system which Napoleon introduced in France was very different he brought many administrative changes in France which can be called as revolutionary changes in France. So all the administrative changes which are brought by Napoleon in France can be grouped under the heading Napoleonic Code or Civil Code of 1804. So now let us look uh, at the changes which were brought by Napoleon in France though there was a monarchy form of government in France. So the first is, Napoleon did away with all the privileges based on birth. That means, during the time of uh, Louis XVI, when the monarchical system was going on, there was a system of three estates and the first two estates enjoyed all privileges because they were born in those families. But Napoleon said that there will be no privilege given to anybody only because they are born in uh, noble families. So he cancelled or he did away all the privileges based on birth. Now second is establish equality before law. So he said that in France all will be equal and there will be, there will be a uniform law for France. Secure the right to property. During the time of Louis XVI, uh, people were not allowed to own property, only the clergy and the nobility and some of the uh, upper class were only having land and property. But Napoleon said that everybody can possess property, everybody can buy property, everybody has a right to property. Then during that time uh, of Louis XVI and during the time of National Assembly also, and later on also the administration of France was very complicated. But when Napoleon became the ruler, he simplified the administrative system and he abolished all feudal dues or feudal system. That means at that time there were feudal lords who were given gifts by the serfs or the peasants and some dues were to be given to the manners. Manners means those who uh, owned large estate and who used to live in big, big houses. So such people were given gifts by the peasants. So all these type of feudal privileges and manorial dues all were cancelled by Napoleon and all the peasants were now free to cultivate in their own way. 
So that means they were they were free from serfdom. Now they are not under any feudal lord. They can uh, do agriculture independently. Then this was all about the village. Now in towns also there were merchants who were having their own guilds. Every merchant group was called as guild. And if a person who is a goldsmith, he want to uh, change his business and he want to become a uh, blacksmith, so he cannot become, he cannot uh, change his guild. So there the guild restrictions were there. But when Napoleon came, he removed those guild restrictions also. Now any person can do any type of business. Now uh, also transport and communication system were improved during the time of Napoleon. So when peasants became free, when the artisans were free to do uh, what they wanted, the workers were free to do their job and the new businessmen were also free uh, to start up their new business and uh, there were chances that they will increase their business, there were chances to prosper in their business. So all these people enjoyed this freedom during the time of Napoleon. Now similarly the small scale businessmen, the small scale industrialists, the small scale producers, they also felt that because uniform system of weights and measures are introduced and uniform laws are introduced, so it was easy for them to trade. So it was not difficult for them to move from one place to another place within France. Instead of that, it became easy for them to take their goods and sell the goods because of uniform weights and measures. Now, these were very good administrative reforms which were introduced by Napoleon. But the rule of Napoleon spread in many other countries also like Holland, Switzerland, Italy, Belgium. These countries were also now under the control of Napoleon. Now, uh, the rule of Napoleon uh, and was uh, the, among the common people, uh, his rule was uh, of a mixed nature. Like some people were happy with the Napoleonic administrative reforms while some were not much happy. So, in places like Holland, Switzerland, uh, Milan, Brussels, so in these places, uh, people felt that uh, Napoleon is uh, a person who brought freedom for them. So at the initial stages all of them were very happy. But as the time passed on, uh, people felt that the new administrative reforms which were introduced by Napoleon were not going hand in hand with the political freedom. That means uh, the rulers were not free to do what they want. Uh, and moreover taxes were also increased. Then censorship was introduced. So people uh, cannot uh, uh, have freedom of speech and expression. So censorship was there. Then taxes were increased and uh, there was forced conscription into the armies. Since Napoleon wanted to conquer the whole world, so every time he was engaged in war and he needed more and more soldiers. So from the in the areas where he captured, from there he uh, wanted people to join the army. and he 